What is going on beautiful people? Welcome back. It's your boy Blue and this is a first look at Train Sim World 2 Rush Hour. And first, I'm taking the controls of Amtrak's ACS 64 from Providence, Rhode Island to Boston, Massachusetts. All aboard. Alright, let's head on to our train. Uh, you can see the passengers actually look way better walking down the stairs. Look at that. But uh, look at those shiny brown pants and the silk shirt, polka dot shirt. <laughs> I'm actually kind of digging the variation. She got a nice black dress there. I can dig that. Everybody's kind of uh, in their summer attire with those short sleeves. You been working out, bro? You been working out? He been working out. He has. I like her jacket. That's kind of sick. That's that brown and 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 light blue teal polka dot. Oh, we got a crowd here coming up the stairs. You got people trying to go down and trying to go up at the same time. They're not smart enough, apparently, to use the escalator. That would be the best way to go. And look at them all bunching up together. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, well, we're just going to move on past that. This is a early access development build here in Providence, Rhode Island. Um, so maybe different than what you see when you get your hands on it. So we're headed to Boston South Station. As you can see, it is on time. I got the train over there. And we got our train here on the right, so we're going to the head, head end of this ACS-64. So good to have the Northeast Corridor back on Train Sim World 2. And this is what we're taking control of today. Oh yeah, that is what I'm talking about. Let's go ahead and hop inside. Pop open the door. All right, guys, welcome to the front office of the ACS 64. And uh, I think it looks pretty good, to be honest with you. I think the modeling is pretty solid. Not much has changed since the uh, previous Northeastern Corridor route, but uh, I think it looks pretty good. I was going to head to the back. This is where our restroom is, if in case we need it. And uh, back here, we can actually have another door uh, where we'll see the other end of the train. And then right here, we actually have a few options. Uh, we can turn on and off the uh, machine room lights. Uh, there's also the pantograph, which you want to make sure is set to rear. And then we have our hip selector, which can be set to feed through or normal. And I believe that's the only thing we can click on back here. We have our voltage meters here. And uh, I don't know if those are actually simulated, but they are at least modeled. So that's nice. So we'll go ahead and head back to the front. Now, we don't have to really mess with any of that stuff unless uh, we're doing a cold and dark start, which we don't really... We really get to do that, which I wish we could do more code and dark starts, but you know. So here we got our battery control, again, for code and dark start. We have our exit lights, our uh, help. Make sure that it is on. If not, you can move it to the start position, which is already on. We don't have to worry about it. Uh, machine room lights are off. Access and ATC are currently off. That's our safety systems here for this Amtrak AC64. Uh, then our marker lights, our alerter, which we will actually turn on. We have down here the door bypass, dynamic brake cutout. Uh, we have the cab, non-cab territory. And we have our emergency electrical shutdown, which I really am curious what that does and if it actually works. I really want to press that button. All right, let's hop in the seat and get the doors unlocked so the passengers can start boarding. Uh, to get this thing ready for departure, we'll start off with the reverser handle. We'll go ahead and put that in and move it back to neutral. There we go. And on the left here, we'll make sure the pentagraph is set to up, which it already is. The MCB should be closed. And then here is your desk console light. You can actually turn it to both, which shows the console lights on left, middle, and the right. And then you go to console only. So only over here on the right side, which is pretty nice. So we also have our cabin light, which is super bright. Uh, you actually see, look at that glare on the screen. So definitely won't be using that very much. On the right side, we'll get our brake mode set to passenger. Yep, there it is. We'll get our front headlight to dim since it's daytime. There's plenty of light out. We don't need the bright, bright lights. And we'll leave the ditch lights off, but that's what those are. If you're driving in the snow or the rain, your wiper is going to be right there. Has a nice sound to it as well. And at the top, we have some shades or blind here, so you can use that if the uh, sun's too bright for you. We'll put the uh, automatic brake into full service. There we go. And we are ready to depart. So actually, I'm also using uh, Track IR, so you can see me move my head from right to left and up and down. Uh, super helpful. Um, I've always used Track IR in like every sim I've really used. So really happy to finally get Track IR on a train sim world. So next we need VR. <laughs> so all right, so it's time to lock the doors. So let's go ahead and do that.
All right, left door is locked. Let's go ahead and put the reverser into forward. We will completely release the automatic brake. There we go, and we'll give it power. Now, the cool thing is this train actually can just throw this, throw this thing back in the max, and uh, the wheels will definitely not slip. So if you're in the snow or in the rain, uh, you need to like kind of let off about 45%. Uh, when you first get rolling but if there's no snow no rain you can just go max right there so we'll go into power speed limit is 30 as we're leaving the station uh, but the signals are all clear Alright, speed limit just jumped up to 60 and we are on the move. Man, I have really missed this train. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be honest with you, man. I've really been missing out on this train since the uh, Train Sim World 2020 days uh, back on Northeastern Corridor. I uh, was definitely looking forward to finally getting us a, another American passenger train. Uh, don't get me wrong, I've definitely been enjoying uh, driving the, uh, the other trains, the, you know, the German trains, the British trains. The French trains, the TGV, I love that thing. Uh, but super happy to finally get us a, another passenger train on uh, Train Sim World, man. It's, it's been a good year uh, for the American routes. I think this year we've gotten three routes, actually. Yeah, we got uh, Clinchfield, Cane Creek, and then this one. So we've gotten more American routes in the past year than we've gotten in the past three years or something like that. So good to finally have one. And uh, I definitely lo love this train. I personally like it. And I've um, definitely been enjoying this route so far. All right, so speed limit is still 60. You see there on the dash, it says 70. That means it's going to jump up to 70 here in just a second when the back of the train passes the speed limit sign. There it is. So giving it power again and moving up to 70 miles an hour. So there we go. I definitely like the addition of the freight cars. Uh, there's actually a uh, MBT right there. There's the F40 from uh, the Boston Transit. It's kind of sitting over there on the side. There's a bit of an industrial area on our left side. Got some different uh, construction equipment and things like that. But uh, a lot of the routes in the past, at least from what I've seen, uh, have kind of missed out on having any, uh, you know, some freight cars. It'd be like a freight area, but you won't see any freight cars. So these are all empties. I don't think you can actually use any of the actual, like, you can't use any of the, of the freight trains. Uh, but they're just kind of there for show. Um, which is cool. I, I mean, I'm, I'm okay with that. Maybe later on there's, there may be some, uh, an ability to add some type of, you know, uh, switching or something to do. Uh, I haven't actually tried to hop in one of those uh, freight trains yet and see if it allowed me to actually use it. But, um, you know, the yard is there, so I'm glad they actually kind of filled it up with something. Even if, uh, in reality, you may not see those exact freight cars there, uh, it's good to at least have something, you know, there at all. All right, so speed limit is dropping back to 60 again. We're actually going to bring the combined handle back to B, which is braking or the dynamic braking, uh, to kind of manage our speed and bring that back. So as far as the brakes go on this uh, ACS64, I use the. Uh, and this is just me personally. This may not be the correct way to do it in real life, but me personally, I tend to use a combined brake handle, which is the handle on the left. I use that to manage my speed. So right now we're a little slow. Actually, no, we'll stay there. We'll leave it there because 60 miles per hour is coming up. Uh, but I use this one to manage my speed. And I'm on the right, I use my automatic brake uh, to kind of help me come to a complete stop at stations. It just seems to work best for me. Uh, whenever you're at high speeds, the combined handle is super effective and very helpful. Uh, the automatic brake, I don't know, it just takes a little bit more time for it to release. And yeah, I mean, unless you're using the safety system where you go into suppression, uh, to get your speed down then i don't really use it too much but it just works out better for me in my opinion i mean you can come to a complete stop with the combined power handle here uh but i don't know just for me it just seems to work better we have some graffiti there on the left side so this is actually a pretty diverse ish route 
Uh, you can see right now we're kind of still departing from the Providence city area or city limits. So we still got some buildings here on the left. But as we leave Providence, uh, the speed limit should jump up and we'll see more countryside, more trees, more open fields and things like that and probably some more industrial areas or areas as well uh, before we get into um you know the city again over in boston it gets very urban out there so uh but i like the route so far man it's nice um haven't had too many uh, performance issues not too many bugs uh, again this is not the final day one patched version so there's still some things that need to be fixed and need to be corrected uh in the version that i have uh but it definitely shows very promising potential um, and in the release candidate so looking forward to that I can see 125 there on the dash so our speed limit just jumping up to 125 like I guess we can throw the throttle forward up to max and uh, let there be kick up in the speed and get rolling very quickly All right, speed's looking good. We're at 126. Uh, you'll see here it shows as 125 is our actual speed limit. That's really the realistic speed that you would honestly go in this particular train. Uh, now, this, the line speed, is, I think, is around 150 miles per hour, uh, which, again, this is where the Acela would come in, and I think it's just kind of the obvious next choice uh, to really enhance and make this route even better is to add that Acela high-speed train. That's America's fastest high-speed train. That's our baby right there, and I think people would really enjoy it, even though there may only be like one stop along the way. Uh, I would still love to see the Acela speed up and down this line. Uh, it just really would take it to the next level. Like, the baby bullet on Peninsula Corridor took that route to the next level in my opinion i thought the route was great i really enjoyed the route still do to this day um but i just think that adding the baby bullet when they did uh which i wasn't personally expecting so i'm not super familiar with that area uh but really 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 um really really made that route much better and so i think that the seller will do the same thing for this one and um i would enjoy that for sure really would and i think a lot of other people would too so that's just my personal request and opinion but you, we gotta do it we gotta do it um again very happy to have track ir finally added to the sim by default so it should work in every train you're in it only works on the inside view so if you're outside it's not going to work for you uh, i would like them to add it to the outside too um, because you could easily turn it on and off on with the quick key of track ir if you're used to it uh, that way you can get some pretty cool um you know camera effects and things like that on the exterior view i think that'd be pretty sweet but it's really nice to be able to freely look around uh you know here and there i don't have to actually move my mouse at all uh, i just look to the left to the right and then click or whatever um so i think again vr i think vr is definitely up next and um if they can make track ir work it just makes sense to do vr next so hopefully just you know dovetail you can make that happen in the near future please that'd be amazing uh but so far like i said really enjoying this route uh, we still have 18 miles to go. Again, this full route is about 50 miles in length. And this section uh, from uh, Providence to Route 128 was our first stint. It's about 30 miles, uh, which is pretty cool. It gives you plenty of time to get up to speed. Um, even if you're in the snow, it takes a bit longer to get fast. But even in the snow, it allows you to get to your top speed at 125. Uh, we're not, I'm actually still max throttle, and we're not even, you know, we're only going on a slight gradient up. Uh, but I don't think we're going to make it to that 150 even if we tried. Now, if you were to do off-the-rails mode and pull in like a TGV or an ICE, something like that, you might be able to pull it off and get it to go a bit faster. But, you know, maybe we could we could have done it if we hadn't started so slow back in uh, Providence. But, yeah, I'm, I'm digging it. I'm digging it. I really enjoyed this route so, uh, this, uh, this route so far. I'm enjoying the, F uh, the, yeah, sorry, the F40 as well. And... Honestly, I wasn't that excited about that train. That's my honest opinion. I wasn't excited about that. I'm like, okay, this is pretty cool. I have a version of this on the Peninsula Corridor, and it's okay, but it's not my choice. Like, I would rather drive the baby bullet over that. And all of us are definitely more excited about the this train. All of us are more excited about this AC64, right? So, um, the F40 is kind of just a bonus. Like, all right, cool. We get to have a Boston train. So pe people who are in Boston, they're excited about that. But the rest of us are like, eh, no, I've never even heard of that. <laughs> you know, just being honest. That's how it is for all of us in every route. But 
I'll tell you this, definitely give it a chance, give it a try, there's some more freight cars on the right. Uh, definitely give it a try, oh, there is one. <laughs> uh, give it a try, because it's a sleeper train in my opinion. I think it's a great train, I think it's way more fun than I expected. I've done a, a couple um, uh, timetables with it and uh, it's so much fun, it looks great, to, uh, sorry, it looks great, it sounds great. I'm not a huge fan of the livery and the color, it's just me. Uh, but I think it's it's a really good train. It's way they did a really good job with it to be honest with you So look it up check it out. I'll definitely be posting a video of that one as well uh, after we do this one So it's gonna be pretty dope. But anyways guys let's do a quick uh, Cabin tour or yeah cabin tour before we uh, reach route 128 All right first here you can see uh, this panel actually does work you can actually change the key to lower high platform or out and you can click on all these buttons you can close and open the doors from here open left open right open local you obviously don't want to do that right now while we're in routes so let's open up this door on the left and right you'll see you have the restrooms and then you have the uh, access restroom here for those who are handicapped we got some baggage areas here uh, and this is actually business class, so it's very nice seating. Got some extra leg room and uh, the nice blue seats. Nice big blue seats. Back here in the back, you can have some tables back here and uh, some fold outs as well. And then at the top, we have the baggage area. We'll continue back to coach class. Again, restrooms. Kind of a different color. We got more of a teal color. It's actually more crowded, uh, it seems. I'm not sure if that's. Correct, and I just feel like it's more people in this in this coach than there was in the other ones. I'm not having any frame drops or any issues um, while driving at 125 miles an hour. <laughs> so again, another coach class coach here. Uh, the top side again, you can see has the baggage area, restrooms, luggage area, all that good stuff. So continue to the next one. Now the next one is a really interesting one for me. This is actually the cafe. Uh, this is the dinner coach or, or the yeah. Yeah, the dinner coach. So there's a nice little skirt she has on down there. Very nice. So you can actually sit in any of these seats. Let's see. I sit down with her and say, hey, I think I really like your blouse. <laughs> um, I'm not sure. I thought that was like a discoverable. We're going to click on that. It's probably supposed to be a screen or something there. And then right here, it'd be really cool. Uh, they mentioned in some of the live streams about having like, uh, you know, static people standing around at stations. I think this would be a really cool place to put those. Um, those things as well have like a person I don't know making a coffee or something like that uh, make it feel a bit more lively so that's pretty cool uh, I've always really liked the cafe coaches so again there's the back of it and uh, so that's pretty much it but pretty cool and then we'll go back here and then we'll see uh, we should see some more uh, regular coach classes nice suit my friend must be going up to a meeting with the pink nails seems legit <laughs> so it's kind of cool uh, being able to walk around and see everybody and what they're wearing and stuff like that. So, pretty nice. I believe we have just a couple more of these back here. Again, the same thing. Pretty much an exact duplicate. And I believe there may be one more. It's a bit of a longer one. Yeah, I think this is the last one right here. Or maybe not. Yeah, there's another. Sheesh. <laughs> and there we go. So, yeah, they're all the same. Once you, The coach classes are the same. Business class is different. And then uh, there's obviously the, ca the cafe cart. And then back here, you can look out the back. Pretty confident that they wouldn't let you just stand out here. But hey, I am driving the train as well, I guess. So pretty cool. So we're only two miles away, so the question is, when should we stop? We're at 127 miles per hour. I think now is probably a pretty good time. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna use the automatic brake and I'm gonna go to like, I don't know, not suppression, probably go to 64%. That might not be enough. Let's go like 76. It's gonna be tough. Hopefully we make it. I'm not using any of the, of the uh, combined lever right now. I'm just only using the automatic brake. Speed's coming down pretty nicely though. 1.2 miles away. We have a yellow signal ahead. So we should be have clear track there. We're at one mile. We got a flashing green. I'm actually gonna release the automatic brake for just a second. 
at 70 miles an hour. Looking good. I gotta be. It's the hard thing coming from this coming driving north and uh, going from 125 to stopping. If you don't have any like slowdowns, is very tricky. All right, here you go. Let's go 59 percent. Let's see if we can get stopped on the marker. First stop. And uh, we are just a little bit ahead of schedule, so we, we can kind of take our time here. And there we go. So we definitely need to get slowed down. We'll go full avocation on that brake. Feeling the bells are rolling in. Look at all the people, man. So many people getting here. Ready to board this train. Yeah, I think we're going to make it. I think we're good. I think we're actually going to make it. Yeah, I'll take that. I'll take that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, as you can see, the station is much, much busier. Uh, which is look at all those people. Wow. Yeah, this is this is what rush hour should feel like. Seriously, like it's. I mean, I haven't really gotten my a personal chance to get on a lot of trains, but I've been in train, in train stations, and whenever a train is arriving or departing, uh, the station is always just, I mean, it's so much, you can barely move at times, especially out here in, in this area. So, really glad they overhauled that, definitely looking forward to getting some more faces <laughs> uh, of these people, and a little bit more variations of that. I'm glad they got the clothes thing, we got the clothes part down, now we just need more faces. Uh, to kind of make it feel a bit more, you know, a ridge. Eh, you know, I guess, oh, somebody just fell off the stairs. <laughs> Did you see that? Oh, my God. Wow. And she's alive. She's just walking it off. And she is standing on the track. <laughs> oh, man, it's fun. People watching can be fun, isn't it, guys? Isn't people watching fun? You might want to stay on the other side of that red line, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. You might want to stay over there. All right, guys. Uh, let's, all right, wait till. All right, cool. Time to lock the doors. Let's go. All right, we are on the move again, and the speed limit goes straight to 125 here. Uh, again, like this, this is not. This is not a slower zone. So we got 10 miles to our next stop, which is Boston Back Bay Track 2. And that should be plenty of time to get to our top speed uh, in route. We've got to be careful to make sure we actually make the stop when we get there. Uh, but man, I really, uh, as you can see back at that last station, is the amount of, of people and passengers getting on and off the trains is just so much. Again, I'm running on the PC version. I don't know what like the amount of actual people at one station is at a time, but it's definitely nice. And when you go in and out of Boston in particular, uh, there's our alerter right there. Uh, you actually see a lot more trains going in and out and it uh, definitely feels much busier. I think Rush Hour is a much needed update at the train sim world. Um, I've always kind of felt some of the trains felt empty. Some of the, the routes felt empty. There's another freight train on our right side, another siding. And uh, so it's good. I, I personally enjoy having more traffic, not feeling like I'm all alone out here in train sim world, you know. Uh, there's a bit of a blurriness happening there. I'm not sure what's going on there, but uh, but yeah, so it's it's good. Rush hour is a big deal. I'm looking forward to seeing more of our older routes getting the same touch up, you know, uh, you know, like some of the the I don't say classic routes, but the older routes need them. Oh, look at that train up there. Can I drive that train? That's what I'm wondering. <laughs> Another cool thing that's kind of unique, uh, and I'm sure more trains do this than I'm aware, uh, but the Amtrak trains actually lean, like the tracks are actually um, banked, I, I guess you could say, kind of like at an angle, like so like the right side of the track will be a lower elevation than the left side when you're on a turn like this. And if you go on the outside view, you can kind of see the train leaning to the left. And from the way I understand it, the actual, um, make sure our good, we got a yellow signal up ahead. And 120, so we're good on speed, but uh, the the actual 
Let's turn a light on, actually. The ditch lights. There we go. Not flashing. On. There we go. All right. So we're almost there. Um, the locomotive itself, from what I understand, does not have the technology where it actually leans. It just kind of goes with the track. But the actual um, coach cars back there, those actually have some kind of like shocks that actually move it so that the you have you're more comfortable. I don't really explain it very well. You have to watch a video on it. <laughs> but it's a pretty cool thing. If you watch it, you actually see that the, the coach cars actually lean left and right with the turn uh, to kind of make the the drive much more comfortable for the passengers. So let's get slowed down because we do have a speed limit up here. Now, one of the reasons that I'm not using safety systems because I personally prefer to use safety systems when driving uh, on these uh, these routes, especially passenger routes. I just think it adds so much more to this to the simulation. But with this one, I don't know if it's a bug or if it's supposed to be that way, but you see those numbers and the beeping, so it says 30 miles per hour. So if we had the alert, not, if you had the ATC on and the access on, uh, it would basically force us to slow down to that speed limit to 30 miles per hour. We're still two miles out. Uh, it, it said 45 back at like three miles. So we would be creeping this whole section of the line at about 30, <laughs> 35 miles an hour. Oh, oh, wrong button. I want to go to. There's another MBT there. I'm bringing the power, combining power handle to help us slow down this time. Uh, but yeah, so I'm turning it off because it has a slow down, in my opinion, way too early. Uh, now I know it wants us to approach the station at a medium speed, which is fine with me. I'm cool with that. You got the red and yellow here. So we do, we do need to slow down, which I am doing, getting down to 60 miles per hour now. We'll stay there for a little bit as we're going uphill and under underground a little bit i love this section of the route lots of people over there on the left but i turned it off because of that so i don't know maybe they'll change that for the release version who knows um because i've noticed that if i do that it has it, it actually extends the time that it takes to do the route by a lot and i end up being it by like a minimum 10 minutes late for each station because i'm creeping down the line so slowly so again using the combined power handle to kind of manage our speed as we go down the hill Speed limit is 60 right now, 60 right now, but we're approaching the station, and I want to get our speed down to like 30 before we hit the platform, and we have a red signal as well right after that, so we want to make sure we don't roll too far. So right now I have combined power handle maxed out, and you see how, how long it takes it to slow down. That's why I'm, I use the automatic brake to actually get me slowed down for a stop because the combined power handle, it, though it does work really well at high speed, when you're going slower, it doesn't feel to be as effective. So right now I've got the, combined, the automatic brake on 47% or so. I'm just gonna release it right now. And the combined brake is also released. We gotta restrict. That means there's a red light or a, um, you know some kind of restriction zone up ahead. Now approaching into Boston Bay. Got the bill on. Another F40 right there. Gonna add in some automatic brake, get us slowed down, make sure we don't miss it again. There's a red signal right after this platform, so we do not want to overshoot. Not even by a little bit. It's not much room to to breathe here, it looks like. Looking good though, man. I'm actually, I, mean, I don't want to speak too soon, but I'm pretty proud of myself by not overrunning any of these stations, especially going that fast. But I will say, this is not my first run. I have had many, many failures. Uh, off camera, <laughs> I should say. So, alright, that's a yellow up ahead now and a flashing red. So, there right, we go. Let's get all the way up to the edge. And we'll bring in the rest of the braking there. And we'll get stopped. And, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Boston Bay. All right, it won't be here long, but before we go, let's take a quick flyover of this Boston Bay Terminal as all the people are deboarding and heading back to most likely the exit. Now, I don't see a whole lot of people actually getting on the train, uh, mostly people getting off. All right, we're ready to go. Let's go ahead and lock the right sides. Wait for those to close. And we'll release the automatic brake. And we should have one last and final stop at Boston South Station. So I'm giving it power. Speed limit is down to, it looks to be 30 or so coming out of here. I think the speed limit is pretty slow coming out of Boston uh, Back Bay. 
and we have a yellow with a flashing red, so we have to watch out, make sure we don't have any stops to hit. So I'm gonna kinda creep out of here pretty slow. Alright, so we do have a red signal up ahead. Why, I don't actually know. We need to stop, like, now, now. So I'm putting the brakes on full service. It's only in 200 yards. I don't know what's holding us up. Again, approaching Boston, you have to think, it, it gets pretty busy out here. So if we're early, then we may have to stop and wait somewhere. So it gets about 100 yards ahead. This, uh, I don't even see the signal. And maybe, is it an invisible signal? <laughs> We're just gonna kinda creep around this corner. Until we see it, let's go ahead and get stopped right there. Yeah, I think it's being hidden by underneath or something. So I'm gonna stop right there because I do not wanna fail <laughs> this far into our route. It says, uh, see if we can get a contact the signaler. Deny, wait for a signal to change. Alright, so we have to wait for that signal to change and see what's holding us up. All right, that's what Rush Hour is all about right there, man. All right, so let's go ahead and release the brakes. We now have the yellow signal to proceed with caution. And we'll give it some power. Speed limit over here is pretty slow. I think it's going to be about 10 miles per hour as we roll into the station. That's okay. Uh, we're still on time. We have three minutes to get there. We're only 600 yards away. So, again, that is what Rush Hour is all about right there, man. Having the hold uh, because we were just a little bit earlier. So, pretty cool. Having, you know, two trains leaving the station at the same time, going two completely different routes. So, that's kind of what I, mo I want more of and I'm looking forward to. And hopefully, uh, the other Rush Hour DLCs coming out with the season ticket. I'm hoping that we get, you know, just, you know, just I want to feel that busyness, you know. Uh, because we know the trains is all about transportation and it's all about getting people to where they want to go. And it's a very busy, busy industry. It's about being on time, uh, all that good stuff. So I'm used to seeing busy tracks, busy stations, and I'm glad that we're getting that here. We are approaching the end of track six here in Boston Station. Almost there. Let's see if we can land it right on the mark here. It's been a really nice trip. I've really enjoyed it. And I've really enjoyed running this route. Uh, both ways, honestly. Some routes I only enjoy one direction, but this one I've enjoyed driving both north and southbound on this train. So there it is, full brakes. And there we are. Objective complete. Let's go ahead and open the doors one last time. Well, again, guys, thank you so much for watching. And um, I hope you enjoyed this route from Providence to Boston. I really enjoyed it. Been really enjoying this route. Been really enjoying Train Sim Rush Hour. And uh, yeah, man, I can't wait for you guys to get your hands on it and try it out yourselves. Well, guys, until next time, remember you have three choices. Give up, give in, give it all you got. Peace, loving, God bless you. I'll see you guys next time, next video. I'm out.